Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we will be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. And now I'd like to turn things over to our first presentation, SUNY New Paltz. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Abigail. I am a freshman admission advisor at SUNY New Paltz. I'm also an alum, so I'm so excited to speak with you uh, about SUNY New Paltz and um, share everything about our school. Um, so I just want to um, get started and there we go. All right, perfect. So um, SUNY New Paltz. Uh, so uh, we're just the State University of New York located in New Paltz, New York. Uh, and we are so proud of our location um, at New Paltz. Uh, we are located smack dab in the middle of the Hudson Valley in New York State. So uh, we are <clears throat> an hour and a half north of New York City, uh, an hour and 20 minutes south of the capital of Albany. And we're also about 15 minutes away from some um, mountains from the Shwango Mountains, uh, as well as 20 to 25 minutes away from some larger cities. So we really are so proud of our location uh, in New York State. Uh, and our location really sets us apart from other institutions. So we're so proud of that. Um, but in addition to that, we're also uh, about a medium-sized school. We have about 7,000, um, just under 7,000 undergraduate students. Uh, and um, most of our classes are 30 students or less. Our student-to-faculty ratio is 16 to one. So you really get that one-on-one -on -one time uh, with our professors. And we really uh, try to not limit our students in any way possible. Uh, so, um, we have over 100 majors and 50 minors for our students to choose from. Uh, I know today is focusing in fine and performing arts, um, but we have so many uh, programs for our students uh, and our, our students really have a lot of different interests uh, and that we really encourage them to pursue all of those interests. So not only do I, we have our School of Fine and Performing Arts, uh, but we also have our School of Business, our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, uh, and our um, School of Science and Engineering, as well as our School of Education. So we have a lot for our students uh, to pursue uh, in addition to the fine and performing arts or simultaneously with the fine and performing arts. Uh, so I definitely want to talk about the admissions process, especially because we have uh, such a limited time here today. Uh, so first and foremost, we require either the common application or the SUNY application. Uh, we do not have a preference. And uh, then we'll be looking at your high school transcript uh, when we're looking at the high school transcript, we'll be looking at the five main subject areas, English, math, social studies, science, and a language other than English. Um, the average of our accepted students have about a 3.5 GPA. Uh, that is not a set number. We take higher than that 3.5, but we also will take a little bit lower than that 3.5 as well. Um, in addition to looking at your high school transcript and seeing if you have added any upper level courses to your transcript. We'll also uh, look to see if you um, sent in letters of recommendation. We require at least one letter of recommendation from a teacher or a guidance counselor, um, but we will accept to a maximum of three letters. Uh, and then after we're looking at um, your letters of recommendation. We'll be reading your essay. Uh, now your essay is your time to shine, your time to tell us who you are as a person, as a student. Uh, and then um, and then if you have any SAT or ACT test scores to submit, you can submit those. Um, we are completely test optional for students applying for fall of 2023. So if you would like to submit those test scores, um, you can, but if you choose to not submit those scores, it will not impact your application. For fine and performing arts, it's a little bit different um, of an application process for our students. So you get academically accepted first. So you submit all of those things I just listed. Uh, you get academically accepted 
And then once you receive that letter of acceptance, then you'll either submit a portfolio of about 10 to 12 pieces, um, or you'll audition depending on your intended major. So, um, you know, for our theater students and our music students, um, they'll set up an audition. Uh, but for our students that are more interested in the fine arts, they will submit a portfolio. Uh, so we do have uh, application deadlines. Um, we have early action admission. Early action is non-binding. It just means if you apply to us a little bit earlier, uh, we guarantee you a decision a little bit earlier. Um, and then you have several months to decide uh, what you would like, if you'd like to attend New Paltz in the fall. Uh, and <clears throat> Uh, or we have general consideration. Um, it is suggested for our uh, fine and performing arts students to apply early action. However, it's not required. So that is um, something you'll find on our website. I always recommend checking out the website uh, just to see um, you know, what's expected in the portfolio review um, and also what is, um, you know, what our, our school is about, what majors we have to offer, especially in those fine and performing arts and what classes we have to offer. Uh, and because we have such a really wonderful location, this is great for internship opportunities um, as well as field trip opportunities. A lot of times since we're close to the Schwangog Mountains, our students will go up into the mountains for some inspiration for their drawing and painting courses. Um, we're very close to the Storm King Art Center, which is a huge outdoor um, sculpture museum of very large sculptures uh, for our st students to check out. But like I said, we're only an hour and a half from New York City. And so we've had some students um, intern at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, for example. So we have a lot to offer our students. Uh, and my time is is dwindling. So uh, I will in the chat post some more um, helpful links about uh, SUNY New Paltz in, in a direct link to our website. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and I'll take I'll pass it on. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, our next presentation is from DeSales University. Hello, everyone. My name is Brennan Graham, admissions counselor here at DeSales University. I do have a slideshow just working on getting it shared here. Um, thank you for joining us all tonight. Let's see here. You. Here we go. All right, so I put together a little slideshow. Um, we usually have one with, with a little bit more information, but I just wanted to kind of condense it. Um, we are a private liberal arts institution located in Center Valley, Pennsylvania, which is about 20 minutes from Allentown, PA. Most people, once we put it on the map, are recognized uh, with Dorney Park. Snoopy is the mascot for that amusement park. Um, we're about 1,800 full-time undergraduate students, so I like to call that the Goldilocks number, we're not too big where you're going to get lost in the sea of people, but not too small um, where you're going to get bored. So I think we're a really perfect size. Our motto is something we try to live every day here at Sales. Um, be who you are and be that well. So it doesn't matter what major you are, whether you're a freshman student, a senior, a sophomore, a staff member, an administrator, we all just want you to be yourself and put your best foot forward each day. Uh, we are the French Bulldogs for athletic teams. We have 18 varsity sports that compete in the MAC Freedom Conference. So we compete against schools like Alvernia, um, Arcadia, Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, we do have six academic divisions. I know um, we are here basically for performing arts, and I have Rebecca Riggi, our wonderful director of performing arts here at DeSales with me today. Um, but if students are interested in things outside of the performing arts, we also have a really great BSN program for nursing, a lot of different uh, business majors, over uh, 10 different business majors with a five-year MBA option as well. We have a five-year criminal justice, um, MCJ option, healthcare professions like an accelerated PA program, an accelerated doctorate of physical therapy program, and then we have biology, pre-med, chemistry, pre-med, forensic science as well. Uh, we are rolling admissions for the most part, so most, most of our programs have no application deadline. Our application opens August 1st for all incoming seniors who are going to be seniors in high school. Uh, it is a free application on the Common App or on our website. doesn't matter to us which one you choose. We need your high school transcript. Uh, we are SAT optional for this upcoming year for juniors, uh, or I'm sorry, well, for rising seniors for the class of 2023, we are going to be test optional. Uh, you can submit test scores, but you do not have to. And then two letters of recommendation. We start reading applications 
for the first week of October. And from there, it's usually a two to three week turnaround time. So we try to let students know as soon as possible, whether they've been accepted of not or not and what program they were accepted into. Uh, the great thing about DeSales is that every student who is accepted will get some type of merit scholarship money to try to offset the cost of tuition, room and board. And there's more scholarship options from there. Uh, if you are applying for one of the performing arts majors, I will let Rebecca handle that, but there is a second piece to the admissions process. Um, and I am looking forward to all your questions, but I wanna hand it over to Rebecca really quickly. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for allowing me to, to be here. My name is Rebecca Riggi. I'm the Director of Recruitment for the Performing Arts Division at DeSales University. In the Division of Performing Arts, we are theater, dance, and TV film, meaning we offer Bachelor of Arts degrees in all of those majors. The really beautiful thing about that is because, uh, is that you can um, do a major in our Division of Performing Arts. You can actually take a minor in many of um, other areas of the university. You can take another major at the university. The BA really allows flexibility and really broadens your horizons. Um, you can also study abroad while studying in our Division of Performing Arts. You can really do so many things um, and aren't truly locked into anything. Um, so I'm gonna go in a little bit to each of the majors. So TV film, um, as you see here, our students complete close to 40 projects in four years. So that's 40 films. That's quite a robust resume if I do say so myself. State-of-the-art equipment, hands-on freshman year, you will get hands-on to our state-of-the-art equipment. We have um, industry standard movie cameras and also other kinds of cameras um, that our freshmen start using right away. We have alumni that are working at Netflix, Lucasfilms, Marvel, Nickelodeon, uh, you name it, they're all over the place. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, alumni network. In our dance major, we offer master classes every Friday. We bring in guest artists every Friday to our campus, actually part of the dance curriculum. We offer two dance concerts a year, a smaller fall dance concert, our emerging choreographers concert. And then in the spring, we offer our DeSales University Dance Ensemble. So two big performance opportunities and also other um, areas where you can perform and choreograph throughout the year. We offer state-of-the-art dance studios with uh, Marley Harlequin floors. So that's really exciting for our dancers. And of course, theater, we do six main stage productions a year. Uh, we did The Sound of Music, which you could see a photo from that um, on the lower right-hand corner. We just wrapped that up yesterday. We just closed the show. Um, we had sold out shows for that whole run, which is so exciting. And we have alumni working on Broadway, off Broadway. They're teaching, they're, they're doing so many things within the arts, it's very exciting. So guaranteed if you've seen Broadway show in the last couple of years, you've probably seen our alumni up there. Um, the one thing I do wanna mention, Brendan mentioned, um, as you will find in many schools, uh, acceptance into the Performing Arts Division is a two-part process. Of course, you need to be academically accepted into the university, into DeSales, and then you need to audition for us uh, for dance and theater and for film, there's an interview component. So that's for your artistic acceptance. So as long as you start your application, you can attend one of our auditions. You don't have to find out your academic acceptance. Um, if you'd like to, if you'd like to wait, you can do that. Um, but just so you know, um, it is a two-part process. So um, I think that's, I don't know if we're close to being at time, but um, I also wanna mention that over the course of the entire year, we get about 27,000 patrons in and out of our beautiful theater behind us. So very exciting. Um, we're happy to be back in person doing shows and uh, Brendan's putting up our contact information now. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Excellent. Thank you very much, Brendan and Rebecca. Um, next up, we will hear from Stevens Institute of Technology. Thank you. Uh, my name is Megan Highland, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Stevens Institute of Technology, located in Hoboken, New Jersey. We are a primarily technology-based school, STEM-based programs, um, with just over 30 different areas of study that we offer. But we do have two that fall into the performing and visual arts categories, our music and technology, and our visual arts and technology programs. So those are the ones I'll talk about a bit more this evening. Just for a little bit of history on the institution, Stevens was founded in 1870, so we celebrate our 150th anniversary back in 2020. You can see an aerial shot of our campus here. We are located in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is right across the river from New York City. So our students really have the best of both worlds in the sense that they have the traditional campus at Stevens. It's within a smaller city, Hoboken, which is just about a mile by a mile, so it has much more of a neighborhood feel to it. But then they have an incredible access and easy access to New York City, which is great for professional opportunities, but also social, cultural, personal opportunities as well. They really get to move very seamlessly between those three spaces. We're a smaller school, just about 4,000 undergraduate students, so we welcome in about 1,000 new students each year. 
What that looks like on a daily basis for students is a 12 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of 25 students. So if you are looking to be in a smaller community where well, you will know your faculty members and your peers, Stevens would be a good fit for you. As I mentioned, we do have 34 different areas of study um, across engineering, math, science, computer science, business, as well as programs within the humanities and arts or specifically within um, our College of Arts and Letters. As I mentioned, I'm going to talk specifically about the two majors that we have related to music and visual arts. If a student chooses to pursue the music and technology program at Stevens, their curriculum will include courses in music theory, music history, music composition, but then also production, sound design. Um, there'll be instrumental proficiency courses, as well as um, opportunities to take classes on technological innovation, specifically within the field of music. While there is a general curriculum for all majors, students can choose to focus their studies in um, three particular areas. You can choose electronic music, composition and theory, or sound recording and production. If a student does choose to apply to Stevens, they do indicate their major on the application and they begin in that academic program right from the start, but the concentrations can be determined later after you've had some um, foundational work in the program and decide where you might like to focus those areas of study. We have various different facilities on campus for students studying within our music and technology program. We have a music and technology studio, um, a piano lab, an electroacoustic studio as well, for example. At Stevens, if you do decide to apply for our music and technology program, you are not required to submit a portfolio, but you do have the option to do so if you would like. Um, prior to the application deadlines, our faculty members do run virtual webinars for students who are interested in submitting a portfolio to speak with them a little bit more about the things that they look for. Um, they're not necessarily looking for a portfolio that shows that you have no learning to do, right? They wanna kind of see where you are at in terms of your artistic development and make sure that we have um, a program that would be a good fit for you and we'd be able to develop you even more um, as a musician, as an artist. Uh, up here on the screen are the um, requirements for the portfolio. There are set requirements that you have to submit. Um, it's not just um, a random sampling. There are specific creative works that you should share, specific number of creative works, I should say, that you should share, as well as a resume of your work related to music specifically, whether it be coursework inside the classroom, extracurricular opportunities outside the classroom, things you might be doing on your own. And we do also have some questions as well that students um, answer as a part of the portfolio. What's important to know as an applicant is that you will have access to submit your portfolio once you submit your general application to Stevens. So that common application gets submitted first, then you get access to an application portal that then allows you to upload your portfolio requirements as well. So if you are thinking about applying to artistic programs, sometimes it is a good idea to get that application in a little bit earlier so you get access to these other um, portals uh, that you can submit the uh, portfolios to. In terms of the visual arts and technology program at Stevens, it really, similar to the music program, merges these traditional aspects um, of art with technology, right? Um, students also within the visual arts and technology program do have a foundation um, curriculum that they all follow, but they do get to choose between four concentrations based on their interests. So either creative computation, design, game design, or moving image. Similarly, we have several facilities on campus for our visual arts and technology uh, program students. We have um, the Fab Lab, an art library specifically for these students, um, an art studio as well for them to, to take their courses and to be doing work outside the classroom as well. Similar to the music and technology program, visual arts and technology applicants can also submit a portfolio if they would like. Again, not a requirement, but it is an opportunity for you to showcase your artistic talent for our faculty members to review. Whereas the music only needed five uh, examples of creative work, sorry, three examples of creative work, the visual arts and technology program requires five. So a few more pieces that you have to give for the portfolio. But similarly, we'll ask for a resume showcasing um, what you've done within this space uh, prior to uh, applying to Stevens and also visual arts uh, supplemental questions that will help gauge a little bit more of your interest in our program specifically and the experience that you're bringing to the classroom. At Stevens, because students are applying for different programs, you apply specifically to a major, and because we are, again, in a lot of ways, a math, science, STEM-based school, we do have requirements across these areas for students that are really a reflection of where they come in to Stevens in terms of their major and how far they have to progress through certain STEM fields. For, the, for students applying to our College of Arts and Letters, which are where these two programs, music and technology and visual arts and technology, um, live, 
there are less requirements in terms of math and science coursework that we need to see in high school in order to be most competitive for admission. Uh, what an engineering student needs to do to apply to Stevens versus a music and technology student are two different things. But if you are looking to do a math or science concentration, you will want to have more um, preparation in these areas. And lastly, just some career outcomes for our students. A lot of our students do pursue internships while in the music and technology and visual arts and technology programs. As I mentioned, that proximity to New York City is so key. Many of our students, of course, going into the media and entertainment, um, but you can see the, the breakdown there with some of our top employers on the left-hand side of your screen as well. Thank you all so much for your attention. I'll turn over the next presenter. Thank you very much, Megan. Uh, next up is Bridgewater State University. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dana and I'm from Bridgewater State University. Uh, Bridgewater State was founded in 1840 and we are located in Southern Massachusetts. Um, so in terms of kind of bringing it into view for everyone from New Jersey, we are about 30 minutes from Boston, uh, as well as 40 minutes from Providence, Rhode Island. And it's such a convenient location because you can take a train right into Boston and really go anywhere in the world from there. Uh, we are a mid-sized campus, or what I consider mid-sized, with over 10,000 students, a 270-acre campus split between East and West, 11 residence halls, and several other buildings on campus, as you can imagine. In terms of our class sizes, our average class size is around 22 to 23 students, and we have a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio. It's also important to note that our faculty is truly faculty. So, uh, we do not have any graduate assistants or teaching assistants in any of our classes. So I wanna jump ahead a little bit and get into the meat of what we look for in a student. Our average GPA is about 3.3 and our average SAT score is around 1100. Uh, but we do use a sliding scale. So if your GPA is a little bit higher, your SAT scores can go lower and vice versa. While we are test optional, if you do have a lower end GPA, we do like to see that test because it can really um, push you above our acceptance rate. Uh, in terms of accoutrements that come along with that application, we do look for three letters of recommendation as well as uh, an essay. So the essay is of your choice. We do not provide a question. So it's really, again, your option to set yourself apart from your peers. We look for four courses of English, four courses of math, three courses of science with two labs, two courses of social studies, um, as well as two foreign languages and two electives. And that's really important for me to say because those are the general minimum requirements for any school in Massachusetts. So we really wanna keep that in mind. Um, I know a lot of people talked about deadlines in terms of getting your application in. While we do have early action, which is non-binding, November 15th, our regular decision is February 15th, but we really are rolling admissions. So you have that opportunity to submit all of your information up until the last moment. And of course, we always recommend that you apply Common App. However, we do have an application on our website. Uh, one thing that is important to know is more than 85% of our students do receive financial aid at BSU, and that includes students that are from out of state. We also offer a Horace Mann scholarship for out of state students. It's $5,000 per year, so that definitely brings down the budget, which is very nice. In terms of our merit-based scholarships, they are extremely limited. We are looking for students that have a 3.9 or higher and SAT scores um, of 1100 or higher. Uh, so you cannot apply to these specific scholarships, rather you are chosen for them. So at Bridgewater, we have over 90 areas of study and 120 concentrations, which is quite a bit. Um, something important to note is along with our many clubs and organizations on campus, we have 21 NCAA sports. Um, and a wonderful study abroad program, which has a thousand programs in 50 different countries. Um, so that's really important to know. But to get to the specific uh, majors that we're talking about in terms of performing in visual arts, at Bridgewater, we have art, we have theater and dance. So for art, you can get a general bachelor's in art history, but we have different concentrations uh, in education. We have concentrations in graphic design, uh, photography, as well as fine art. So that's really important to note. Um, a lot of our students participate in internships at successful companies like DraftKings, State Street Corporation, uh, Samsonite, Hasbro, Museum of Fine Arts. 
Um, and we have a lot of international study tours, uh, which are faculty-led short-term travel courses that run for about one to three weeks. Um, and the students really have that opportunity to engage in cross-cultural artistic activities, which is pretty nice. Uh, we also have our undergraduate research program for every single major that I'm going to talk about. Um, and this really provides additional funding for supplies, travel, equipment, and during the summer students work with faculty mentors to produce uh, and conduct in-depth research. And that's really important, especially if our students want to go on to grad school. And then we have our wonderful theater program. Um, so we have offer theater arts as well as theater education. Um, this program combines, you know, the practical instruction with history, theory, and criticism. So we have everything from sets, costumes, lights, music, sound, uh, and our faculty members are veteran theater professionals. Um, they have extensive experience on stage, behind the scenes, and we produce about four major productions each academic year. Uh, and graduates have gone on to careers in New York, Chicago, Boston, and many other places uh, around the US. As far as dance, uh, our students gain knowledge of a lot of different dance forms, practices, uh, research, and practical experience in a variety of environments. And our students go on to become dancers, choreographers, as well as teachers. Um, and they are, we do have two um, main stage productions each academic year, featuring choreography by students, faculty, and additional guests. It is important to note that at Bridgewater, we admit per the school itself, not per the major. Uh, so in order to get into Bridgewater, you just need to go ahead, submit your application. That looks like we're running out of a little bit of time. So I just wanna say thank you so much. Uh, I can provide our link below. Thank you very much. And next up is Marist College. Thank you. All right, so just going to get started here. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Kate Bedzinski. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Marist and also an alum of the college, class of 2010. Um, and I'm just going to start off with some background information about Marist. Um, and first with our location. So we are located in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley region of New York, just across the river from New Paltz, who you heard from earlier. Um, and we are located on the banks of the Hudson River. So it's a really beautiful campus. Um, as you can see from the, the pictures in the background here, um, it's, it's a very traditional looking college campus, lots of open green spaces, um, academic quads, you know, places for students to hang out. Um, and we have that kind of picturesque setting there on the Hudson River. Um, but at the same time, we are 90 minutes north of New York City by train. So um, I think our, our location is unique in that we have our own space kind of tucked, tucked away there in the Hudson Valley, but also with access to um, a major city for internships or, um, you know, just, just traveling to the city for fun. Just some quick facts about Marist. We're a small to medium sized school. We have about 5,500 undergraduate students and we do have small classes. Um, that, that population allows for us to have um, about 20 to 25 students per class and we never exceed 35. So uh, we don't have any lecture halls and students really get to know their professors um, with an overall 16 to one student to faculty ratio. We do have over 40 majors, which I'll talk about more in a moment. We are a traditional um, liberal arts focused institution with lots of different academic options. Um, we do have some graduate programs as well, as well as a doctorate program. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about those today, but we do have some graduate programs that are offered in a five-year format um, where you can earn your bachelor's and master's degrees in five years. We have students coming to Marist from all over the country and all over the world. Um, so certainly in terms of diversity, we, we represent a lot of uh, different geographic areas. Um, and we're a very uh, community focused um, campus. Students are, are coming and living on campus. They're not really going home on the weekends. So if you're looking for a place that really is like a, a living, learning, residential community, we definitely are that. Um, our students are very successful when they leave. 97% um, are employed or attending graduate school within six months. And they're graduating um, at, a, at a quicker pace than uh, peers on a national average. 
Um, in terms of majors, this is our complete list of, of majors. So um, I know this presentation is focused on performing in visual arts, so we'll talk more about that in a moment, but just wanted to give you a sense of um, the, the extent of our programs. So you can see we have traditional liberal arts majors, we have communications, we have business, we have technology programs, um, a full school of science. So there's really something for everybody. Um, and it's also nice that you can come into Marist undeclared and be undeclared for up to two years. So if you have multiple interests or you wanna try out you know, a number of different things, um, then a, a liberal arts type environment might be the right fit for you. So specifically uh, regarding the arts, um, this here is a more condensed list of our majors and our minors. So um, I'm not gonna read off every single one, but I do just wanna point out that uh, a few of these are offered at our campus in Florence, Italy, as well as offered in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, some of them are offered exclusively though in Florence, Italy. So that would be our conservation. Um, it's really our art restoration program um, and our interior design program. So those are offered fully in Florence for four years, um, earning your full bachelor's degree there. Um, but otherwise the minors are offered or the majors and minors are offered in, in Poughkeepsie as well. So um, we, we do have quite a few here. I think uh, fashion is, has become really, really popular at Marist. So um, that's something I wanted to point out. Um, and then just regardless of what you study, there will be something for you to do in a hands-on environment. And so we really emphasize that. Um, like I said, we're 90 minutes north of New York City. So when thinking about internships, you know, a lot of our students take advantage of New York City for internships um, and for programs like fashion and art and, um, you know, media studies, a city is really going to be the best place for you to do an internship. And so we've had students intern at places like um, Michael Kors, Calvin Klein. Um, we've had students intern with NBC, other, other major uh, networks, um, as well as a variety of art galleries and um, you know, publications and things like that. So the, their experiences are really spanning, you know, all of those different sort of art majors. Um, we also do have quite a bit of study abroad. We were recently ranked second in the country for study abroad participation. Um, and so I mentioned Florence already, which is our most popular study abroad site, but we have students studying at over 70 destinations around the world. Um, and all the majors that I mentioned earlier are compatible with study abroad. So if that's important to you, you can really accomplish that in your four years. Um, in terms of student involvement, we have students uh, involved in a variety of different clubs and organizations on campus, many of which are geared towards performing in visual arts. Um, specifically, we have a, a lot of uh, music clubs, about 10% of our students are involved in music. Um, we have a band, uh, a group called Singers, which is our large choir, um, the orchestra, as well as a variety of um, smaller ensembles um, as well that are audition based. We also have a theater club um, that does not require you to be a theater major to be involved, um, as well as other things like photography club, dance ensemble, et cetera. But really, um, you can be involved in any of these things regardless of what your major is. And then uh, before I wrap up, just a couple of things about our application process. I won't walk you through all of this, but you can just kind of view here some of our deadlines, which um, are also on our website. Um, and we do have a couple of scholarship opportunities in the performing arts, specifically theater and music. So if you're interested in auditioning for um, one of those scholarships, um, it wouldn't be for getting into the, the major or the minor. It would just be um, to to receive the scholarship. So um, it would be $2,500 per year um, and it's based on the audition. Um, and if you receive those, you must be at least a music minor or a theater minor. Um, I know I'm running out of time. Um, so I'll just wrap up by quickly saying that we're open for visits. If you wanna come see us, we have something pretty much seven days a week. And I will also put my contact information in the chat if you need to follow up with me, but thank you so much for your time. Excellent, thank you very much, Kate. Uh, next up is Moore College of Art and Design. Hi everyone, my name is Elena. I'm an admissions counselor at Moore uh, College of Art and Design. Uh, like Matt said, we're located in Center City, Philadelphia. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen and tell you a little bit more about Moore. Um, so this is obviously my profile, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm the admissions counselor for New Jersey. So if you are you know, interested in attending Moore or interested in having your portfolio reviewed, any questions answered, I will be the person speaking with you. Um, I'm also an artist myself. I have a personal practice 
practice in Philadelphia. Um, and Mora College of Art and Design is a college for visual artists. Um, so unfortunately, we don't offer any performing arts majors, um, but we do have a few clubs that are interested in performing arts. So especially if you are an aspiring artist or designer, um, we would really love to have you as part of our class at Moore. So just to tell you a little bit more about us, uh, we were founded in 1848 as a textile design school for women, and we still remain uh, the nation's only historically women's college for art and design in the country. Um, our admissions policy is that we accept applications from anyone who identifies as a woman or as gender non-binary or who is born female. Um, so cis women, trans women and men and non-binary students are all welcome to apply. Um, you know, and the purpose of that is really to serve those who have been historically underrepresented in the arts in the past. So really lovely to have students, faculty, and staff all coming to the more for the purpose of, you know, uplifting women, non-binary, and trans students in arts and design. Um, just some basic numbers for us. 100% of our BFA students will receive some sort of financial aid or support. Um, we are a merit-based scholarship program. So, um, you know, submit your application to us, and I'll mention about how to do that later on. Um, and once you're accepted, you will receive a scholarship. It's as simple as that. Um, really based on the strength of your transcript portfolio and we do require portfolio which again I'll mention in just a few minutes. Um, we are definitely a career focused school. 97% uh, of our BFA alumni are employed or in grad school one year out of graduation and this is employed in their chosen creative fields um, and certainly what goes into that is the skills that you're learning in your classroom, the kind of network that an art and design college can offer in terms of you know having a career center, having faculty and staff who are all very interconnected into these programs that we offer um, and as well as our internship program. So we are the only art and design college in the country to offer a guaranteed paid internship program. This is a thousand dollar stipended that takes place in between your junior and senior years. So it really enables you to live where you need to for that summer, you know, whether it be in Philadelphia, whether it be in New York City, um, whether it be on the West Coast or abroad. We also have additional travel fellowships that are available to students to really take an, uh, a really incredible internship opportunity and start building your own personal network on top of the network that offers uh, that's offered at more. So like I said, we're in Center City, Philadelphia. So if you're familiar with the area, we're right next door to the Franklin Institute and Academy of Natural Sciences, right across the street from the Barnes Foundation and Philadelphia Museum of Art. Super centrally located. Um, uh, you know, again, for artists and designers, being in a city is gonna be where the opportunities for art internships and uh, jobs will be. And Philadelphia is a really great city for that, right? Very uh, uh, conveniently located to a lot of different cities on the East Coast, but also the most cost affordable out of those and also a really accessible art scene is what I've found. Um, so like I mentioned, my, I myself am an artist. I came here when I was 18 and have found the art scene in terms of gallery spaces, um, contemporary art exhibitions, um, certainly internship opportunities being really accessible to young people. Um, so something that I've really enjoyed about Philadelphia and I can you know, sing the praises of the city all day long. So these are the uh, majors that we offer at Moore. Obviously we've got animation and game arts, art education, fashion design, film and digital cinema, fine arts, graphic design, illustration, interior design, and photography. Each of these majors is also offered as a minor with the exception of art education and film, uh, but with the inclusions of art history, creative writing, business, and textile design. Um, so again, really amazing opportunities if you're interested in becoming an artist and designer, again, connecting with these faculty who are all practicing in art, artists and designers in these fields. Our student to professor ratio is around seven to one, and overall at our school, we are extremely strong. We have around 400 students in our undergrad program in total, so around 100 students per year. Um, so what that means for our students is, you know, very small class sizes. That seven to one is pretty indicative of some of our class sizes, especially as you get into the major. Um, you know, lots of one-on-one -on -one time with your professors, a lot of studio space and space to spread out and create. Um, you know, for instance, our fine arts students for both their junior and senior year um, will have their own private studio spaces. All of our majors will have those spaces for their senior year as well. Um, for our school, all of the majors that we offer are Bachelor of Fine Arts or BFAs. The difference you'll find with a BFA versus a BA or a Bachelor of Arts that you might have offered at other schools, the BFA is going to put more of an emphasis on studio time. So around two thirds of your classes will be studio classes and one third will be liberal arts. Um, really puts the emphasis, you know, to these uh, creative industries that you have the technical and studio knowledge that you've really spent time in the studios. Um, and also really exceptional if you're interested in a major and maybe a minor or a double minor um, that if you'd like to come in for animation and game arts and minor in illustration and in photography, you know, really create a very unique portfolio for yourself. 
again, that guaranteed paid internship opportunity is unique to our school and really puts you out there for a great network to build for yourself. So these are some of the companies that our students have worked in, certainly some of the larger names, places like Anthropology, Free People, um, Urban Outfitters. The urban campus overall is located in South Philly, so super accessible for our students, especially within fashion design, graphic design, and photography. Um, but again, a really great opportunity to start building that personal network. You'll work with our career center throughout your junior year to help with this placement. So something that should be really meaningful to you and hopefully give you a really great experience um, in the introduction to your professional life. Um, so just quickly on how to apply, our application for uh, next year will be opening in August this year. The requirements we have are the application transcript and portfolio, optional being letters of recommendation, personal essays, and SAT or ACT scores. And we love to connect with students. Like I said, we're a very small school, so we're always happy to do informal portfolio reviews. If you just want to check in about what sort of things will go into your portfolio, um, if you'd like to come for a campus tour, we offer those Monday through Friday. Um, we're hosting the National Portfolio Day in Philadelphia this fall. Um, and of course, we have a bunch of virtual events that we'd love you for you to join as well. Um, but that's it. If you'd like to scan this QR code, uh, this is, takes you to our you know, inquiry page if you'd like to hear more from us. And I'll also put my information in the chat. But thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> Excellent, thank you very much. Um, so we have a few minutes left in this session. I would invite all of our panelists to come back on camera and I have a couple questions that you all can answer. Um, the first question is, uh, what is one piece of advice you would give someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask our panelists to respond in the same order that they presented. So we will go back to SUNY New Pulse for our first response. Okay, thank you. Um... So the question was what advice we would give? Okay, um, I think that uh, my, my piece of advice would just be to, if you can, uh, visit each uh, individual school that you're interested in. Um, if not in person, then uh, virtually. Uh, I always encourage students to see if the college that they're choosing meets uh, not only their college uh, education expectations, uh, but also the expectations for their college education experience. Um, definitely want to piggyback off of that. I, I would say to, to visit and to get there if you can, but also get to know your admissions counselor. Um, throughout the college search process, there's a lot of different nuances between schools and rolling admissions and application deadlines. So get to know the person who's there to work with you, whether it's you know the, the person who's on the panel tonight who represents Southern New Jersey or Northern New Jersey or, or anywhere um, in your state, just get to know them because that's the best way um, for you to kind of know that if a school is right for you because they can really give you all the information that you need. And speaking on the performing arts side of things, uh, come see a show, come see a dance concert, come see a film festival, speak to the faculty, get to know uh, their experience, ask if they're still working in their industries and talk to students. Uh, really immerse yourself in all of the, the programs and majors of interest. The piece of advice I would give is to really just try to focus on yourself during this process. It's really easy to look around and see what are other people doing? Where are other people applying? What sorts of essays are they writing? Things like that. But, you know, you can't control what others are doing. And you can't control what the school is looking for, but you can control what you put forward, right? So really focus your efforts on that. Put forward the best application you possibly can. Do your research on the schools you're applying to, places you think might be a good fit, and you'll ultimately find that match at the end of the day. Everyone had really great advice who came before me. Um, so it's hard to really think of what to say, but I personally would like you to make a list of your wants and needs when you're looking at different institutions. It's important that it doesn't just have your major. You wanna look at the location, the class size, uh, extracurricular activities, as well as internships. It's really important. And then what is the retention rate for each school? So along with visiting, I would also say, you know, while you're there, maybe talk to current students, see if you vibe with a campus as well as the campus community. So those are some things that I would look at. I would say to be open-minded in the process. Um, I think it's really easy to get caught up in what your peers are doing and what your friends are doing, where they're applying, where they're looking. Um, and certainly, you know, those wherever they're looking, you know, might be good um, options for you as well. But there's a lot of colleges. Um, and I feel like when you go to different, um, when I speak with different, you know, communities of students, the same names 
keep coming up over and over again. And um, there's certainly great institutions, but there's there's so many more schools than you could ever imagine. So just kind of looking out uh, beyond your, your comfort zone, looking at a big school, looking at a small school, looking at a suburban school, an urban school, um, because you never know what you're gonna like. So um, I think it's important to do the, the process um, in an open-minded way and, and do what's best for you. And, and I know it's easier said than done, but not to get caught up in the, in the pressures of, of what other people might think uh, is best for you. Great. And then uh, certainly to my visual arts students, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to your admissions counselor if you're interested in going for a portfolio review. Oftentimes we can connect you with the person who would be officially re reviewing your portfolio and connect you on an informal basis. So if you just want to check in, because this is oftentimes the first time you're putting together a college portfolio, we definitely understand that. We want to be there to help because um, we, we know this process is confusing and that kind of goes for the admissions process as a whole. Uh, like was said before, we're here to help. Um, and then again, I would also encourage you to think about where you're spending your time outside of campus. So think about what sort of location you're interested in, what sort of community you're comfortable in. Do you want to stay on campus most of your time? Are you looking to explore a new location outside of that time? Are you interested in internships? How far are you willing to go for those internships? And, you know, where do you want to create your connections for the school and, uh, you know, after school as well? So think about the sort of things that you like to do in your current life and what you can imagine for yourself in college. Um, and like, as everyone said, keep an open mind. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Um, that brings us to the end of this session. I want to say thank you all for joining us. Thank you to our participants and to our panelists. Uh, there'll be a quick survey when the Zoom window closes, so we do appreciate your responses. Um, do sign up for more sessions that are part of this fair, um, and a recording will be available at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. So again, thank you all so much, and have a great rest of your evening. Bye-bye.